had a useless Raspberry Pi laying around. So I decided to add a 7 inch touchscreen and make a kiosk for my home assistant. In a previous video I prepared the Raspberry and did some cool things on the home assistant and now the touchscreen has arrived from China. So let's see what I got for 30 bucks. This thing came pretty fast, I was surprised about that. There was a plastic frame slash enclosure and some cables in the bundle. It was very well packed. So right away I hooked it up to the Raspberry and what do you know, the touch interface started working without any configuration. That was nice, cause I was stressing about that a lot in the previous video. But the resolution needed to be adjusted so I added these lines to the config file of the Raspberry as the manufacturer suggested. And after that everything was just fine. But this screen does require additional power. I used a 2.6 amp power supply for the Raspberry and apparently that thing can't handle any additional load. Now a 5 volt supply that has more than 2.6 amps is kinda rare to find. And in my builds I always try to use as much stuff I can get from the dumpster. You know, to save some money and the planet. So first, I use two supplies. But if you use two different power supplies, then you will mix two different plus 5 volts in the same system. That can result in ripples and all kinds of unexpected behavior. Luckily, I did find a power supply board that produced 3.7 amps. I measured that and using one supply is a much better way of powering this whole thing, the raspberry and the screen. So I put that in a box along with a 5 amp fuse, which is way too much. I'll have to replace that later. This whole thing, by the way, consumes only 7 watts while idling. Not bad. Now, I don't want any additional current going through the raspberry, so I made a split in the power line. I fed the Raspberry through the GPIO pins to save space and the screen through a modified micro USB connector. More on that later. Now this frame was a pain to assemble, I did it like 5 times. There were no instructions in the box, I felt kinda stupid doing this. It's important to put spacers in the right place in this sandwich so that these screw heads from the Raspberry won't touch the back of the screen. It is nice that I ordered the bundle, but really this frame is only useful for setting up and testing this thing because there is a big problem with connectors sticking out, look at it. So looking like this, it's not something I want in my kitchen and later I will have to build a custom enclosure. I did try to make it nicer by manhandling cables and using some zip ties. And guess what? Wi-Fi stopped working. Yeah, apparently using an unshielded HDMI cable creates so much radiation that it blocks Wi-Fi. So this cable I got in this bundle is a bad kind of garbage. I took it apart and discovered that the shielding layer wasn't even connected. By the way, during this hassle I stumbled on a possible reason for losing Wi-Fi connection after some period of time. I discussed that issue and possible fixes in a previous video. So check that video in the description and please subscribe to my channel right now. So the reason for that may be also in the power management service of the network interface it goes to sleep. The only way I was able to turn that service off permanently was putting this command in the Chrome tab to turn this service off at boot. Anyways, let's deal with those connectors. I don't want to spend any additional money for this build buying fancy connectors. So I took a working HDMI cable, stripped those connectors to the bare minimum and carefully banded the wires. Also I did a similar modification with the micro USB connectors. And like that I reduced the overall size of this thing a lot. Here it is before and this is after. Not bad, but not perfect. This is how it looks from the back. I also had to make this HDMI cable shorter. That was a 3 hour hassle and I wasted 2 cables doing that job. So if you have money to spare just buy a cable. Anyways, the display and the touch interface works fine, but the view angle is kinda funky. If I look at it from the top, I can see everything very well at any angle. But if I place this thing on a shelf or a countertop in my kitchen, I get some blind spots like this when I look at it from a distance. I think this display was originally designed to be used in a car where your eyes are higher than the position of the display. I can try to fix that with rotating the image in the configuration and installing the thing upside down, but not with this frame since it has an HDMI connector sticking out from the top even when modified to the bare minimum. Now here's a cool automation I made involving the browser mod component. So because 7 inch is just not enough for showing everything I want in one view and still having those buttons big enough, I made a separate view for my music stuff since I also wanted to use this device as a media player. See more on that in my previous video. So these buttons play internet radio in this browser on this device with these speakers connected through the jack. I made an automation to return back to the main view after I pressed the radio button in the music view. 
This is how the script configuration looks like for a single radio station. This way I don't have to remember to go back to the main view every time I start a radio, because I often forgot that. I also started designing the sound system for this setup. I tested some very compact speakers from a modern TV. The idea was to mount them in the same custom enclosure with this screen. But those sounded like shit. And these little guys are just not that sufficient, I'm kinda picky about sound. Although right now they seem to be the best choice, since they have an amp and an audio sensor that turns the power on and off automatically. That means that I don't have to use something like a Sonoff for that one task. Anyways, I got a little bit carried away with this speaker stuff. It sucked me in for days. Maybe more on that in my next video. I also wanted to use this device for voice notifications from my home assistant. I tested the text-to-speech service from Google and also a similar open source project. And they all sometimes work and sometimes not. And that is kind of opposite to being stable. And being stable is very important for notifications. So I decided just to record some clips and play them from local storage. That's possible with Media Extractor integration. Now I have mixed feelings about whether a 7 inch is big enough for this kind of use. It is 3 times cheaper than the 10 inch, which is good. It's small in size, so it will blend with the interior better. It uses less energy, which is kind of important if you run something almost around the clock. But I can only put a limited amount of big enough buttons on the screen. And when I walk around the room and want to see a glance of what's happening, the letters and numbers are just too small to see from a distance. I could adjust the resolution to make the letters and uh, numbers bigger, but then I would just limit the amount of information I could put on a screen. But we are pretty happy with the overall concept of, of this thing. My wife loves it. And my 5-year-old son started using it like crazy. He can't read, but he knows the different icons on the buttons and uses this thing very well. That was unexpected, which means that I can't install this thing where I initially wanted here up in the air, because now my son wants to use it and he can't reach that high. And I don't want to have it consuming space on my kitchen countertop. Maybe I will build something special like a column stand with an integrated sound system. So, subscribe to my channel to see my next video about this project. Please like this video. Thanks for watching.